Hello, hi there. I feel it my great privilege today to share these readings with you for day number 303, Ezekiel 32 and 33, Isaiah 12, and Hebrews 8. How can we fail to have a good day today in God's Word with such great passages? So let's open to Ezekiel 32. Again, as seen in the messages to Tyre and to Egypt, God was not just speaking to one king or about one kingdom, but was also speaking about the kingdom or city of man, or the world system under the rulership of Satan. Ezekiel 32 Heading The king of Egypt is compared to a crocodile. On the first day of the twelfth month of the twelfth year of our exile, the Lord spoke to me. Mortal man, give a solemn warning to the king of Egypt. Give him this message from me. You act like a lion among the nations, but you're more like a crocodile splashing through a river. You muddy the water with your feet and pollute the rivers. When many nations gather, I will catch you in my net and let them drag the net ashore. I will throw you out on the ground and bring all the birds and animals of the world to feed on you. I will cover mountains and valleys with your rotting corpse. I will pour out your blood until it spreads over the mountains and fills the streams. When I destroy you, I will cover the sky and blot out the stars. The sun will hide behind the clouds, and the moon will give no light. I will put out all the lights of heaven and plunge your world into darkness. I, the Sovereign Lord, have spoken. Many nations will be troubled when I spread the news of your destruction through countries you never heard of. What I do to you will shock many nations. When I swing my sword, kings will shudder in fright. On the day you fall, all of them will tremble in fear for their own lives. The Sovereign Lord says to the king of Egypt, You will face the sword of the king of Babylonia. I will let soldiers from cruel nations draw their swords and kill all your people. All your people and everything else that you are proud of will be destroyed. I will slaughter your cattle at every water hole. There will be no people or cattle to muddy the water any more. I will let your waters settle and become clear and let your rivers run calm. I, the Sovereign Lord, have spoken. When I make Egypt a desolate wasteland and destroy all who live there, they will know that I am the Lord. This solemn warning will become a funeral song. The women of the nations will sing it to mourn for Egypt and all its people. I, the Sovereign Lord, have spoken. Heading The World of the Dead On the fifteenth day of the first month of the twelfth year of our exile, the Lord spoke to me, Mortal man, mourn for all the many people of Egypt. Send them down with the other powerful nations to the world of the dead. Say to them, Do you think you are more beautiful than anyone else? You will go down to the world of the dead and lie there among the ungodly. The people of Egypt will fall with those who are killed in battle. A sword is ready to kill them all. The greatest heroes and those who fought on the Egyptian side welcome the Egyptians to the world of the dead. They shout, The ungodly who were killed in battle have come down here, and here they lie. Assyria is there with the graves of her soldiers all around. They were all killed in battle, and their graves are in the deepest parts of the world of the dead. All her soldiers fell in battle, and their graves surround her tomb. Yet once they terrified the land of the living. Elam is there with the graves of her soldiers all around. 
they were all killed in battle, and they went down uncircumcised to the world of the dead. In life they spread terror, but now they lie dead and disgraced. Elam lies down among those killed in battle, and the graves of her soldiers are all around her. They are all uncircumcised, all killed in battle. In life they spread terror, but now they lie dead and disgraced, sharing the fate of those killed in battle. Meshech and Tubal are here, with the graves of their soldiers all around. They are all uncircumcised, all killed in battle, yet once they terrified the living. They were not given honorable burial like the heroes of ancient times who went fully armed to the world of the dead, their swords placed under their heads and their shields over their bodies. These heroes were once powerful enough to terrify the living. That is how the Egyptians will lie crushed among the uncircumcised who were killed in battle. Edom is there with her kings and rulers. They were powerful soldiers, but now they lie in the world of the dead with the uncircumcised who were killed in battle. All the princes of the north are there, and so are the Sidonians. Their power once spread terror, but now they go down in disgrace with those killed in battle and are laid to rest, uncircumcised. They share the disgrace of those who go down to the world of the dead. The sight of all these who were killed in battle will be a comfort to the king of Egypt and his army, says the sovereign Lord. I caused the king of Egypt to terrorize the living, but he and all his army will be killed and laid to rest with all the uncircumcised who die in battle. The Sovereign Lord has spoken. Ezekiel 33 Heading, God Appoints Ezekiel as a Lookout The Lord spoke to me, Mortal man, tell your people what happens when I bring war to a land. The people of that country choose one of their number to be a lookout. When he sees the enemy approaching, he sounds the alarm to warn everyone. If someone hears it but pays no attention and the enemy comes and kills him, then he is to blame for his own death. His death is his own fault because he paid no attention to the warning. If he had paid attention, he could have escaped. If, however, the lookout sees the enemy coming and does not sound the alarm, the enemy will come and kill those sinners, but I will hold the lookout responsible for their death. Now, mortal man, I am making you a lookout for the nation of Israel. You must pass on to them the warnings I give you. If I announce that an evil person is going to die, but you do not warn him to change his ways so that he can save his life, then he will die, still a sinner, but I will hold you responsible for his death. If you do warn an evil person and he doesn't stop sinning, he will die, still a sinner, but your life will be spared. Heading Individual Responsibility the Lord spoke to me, Mortal man, repeat to the Israelites what they are saying. We are burdened with our sins and the wrongs we have done. We are wasting away. How can we live? Tell them that as surely as I, the Sovereign Lord, am the living God, I do not enjoy seeing sinners die. I would rather see them stop sinning and live. Israel, stop the evil you are doing. Why do you want to die? Now, mortal man, tell the Israelites that when someone good sins, the good he has done will not save him. If an evil person stops doing evil, he won't be punished, and if a good man starts sinning, his life will not be spared. I may promise life to someone good, 
But if he starts thinking that his past goodness is enough and begins to sin, I will not remember any of the good he did. He will die because of his sins. I may warn someone evil that he's going to die, but if he stops sinning and does what is right and good, for example, if he returns the security he took for a loan or gives back what he stole, if he stops sinning and follows the laws that give life, he will not die but live. I will forgive the sins he has committed, and he will live because he has done what is right and good. And your people say that what I do isn't right. No, it's their way that isn't right. When someone righteous stops doing good and starts doing evil, he will die for it. When someone evil quits sinning and does what is right and good, he has saved his life. But Israel, you say that what I do isn't right. I'm going to judge you by what you do. Heading The News of Jerusalem's Fall On the fifth day of the tenth month of the twelfth year of our exile, someone who had escaped from Jerusalem came and told me that the city had fallen. The evening before he came, I had felt the powerful presence of the Lord. When the man arrived the next morning, the Lord gave me back the power of speech. Heading The Sins of the People The Lord spoke to me, Mortal man, the people who are living in the ruined cities of the land of Israel are saying, Abraham was only one man, and he was given the whole land. There are many of us, so now the land is ours. Tell them what I, the Sovereign Lord, am saying. You eat meat with the blood still in it. You worship idols. You commit murder. What makes you think that the land belongs to you? You rely on your swords. Your actions are disgusting. Everyone commits adultery. What makes you think that the land is yours? Tell them that I, the Sovereign Lord, warn them that as surely as I am the living God, the people who live in the ruined cities will be killed. Those living in the country will be eaten by wild animals. Those hiding in the mountains and in caves will die of disease. I will make the country a desolate wasteland and the power they were so proud of will come to an end. The mountains of Israel will be so wild that no one will be able to travel through them. When I punish the people for their sins and make the country a wasteland, then they will know that I am the Lord. Heading The Results of the Prophet's Message The Lord said to me, Mortal man, your people are talking about you when they meet by the city walls or in the doorways of their houses. They say to one another, Let's go and hear what word has come from the Lord now. So my people crowd in to hear what you have to say, but they don't do what you tell them to do. Loving words are on their lips, but they continue their greedy ways. To them, you are nothing more than an entertainer, singing love songs or playing a harp. They listen to all your words and don't obey a single one of them. But when all your words come true, and they will come true, then they will know that a prophet has been among them. Let's turn now to Isaiah 12. In yesterday's reading, we again heard of the righteous branch, a shoot growing from David's root or stump. And we heard these famous words which I give here from the NLT. And the Spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. He will delight in obeying the Lord. 
He will not judge by appearance or make a decision based on hearsay. He will give justice to the poor and make fair decisions for the exploited. The earth will shake at the force of his word, and one breath from his mouth will destroy the wicked. He will wear righteousness like a belt and truth like an undergarment. Isaiah 12, Heading, Hymn of Thanksgiving A day is coming when people will sing. I praise you, Lord. You were angry with me, but now you comfort me and are angry no longer. God is my Savior. I will trust Him and not be afraid. The Lord gives me power and strength. He is my Savior. As fresh water brings joy to the thirsty, so God's people rejoice when He saves them. A day is coming when people will sing, Give thanks to the Lord. Call for Him to help you. Tell all the nations what He has done. Tell them how great He is. Sing to the Lord because of the great things he has done. Let the whole world hear the news. Let everyone who lives in Zion shout and sing. Israel's holy God is great, and he lives among his people. Let's turn now to Hebrews chapter 8. In yesterday's reading, the writer of Hebrews showed many similarities between Melchizedek and Christ, including that they are kings of righteousness and peace. They will live forever and are higher in position and better than Abraham and Moses. Christ is also better than the Levitical priests because he received his priesthood by an oath from God and because he holds his office as priest forever. These things are amazingly confirmed by the prophetic verse in Psalm 110. And very significantly, Jesus, thus being our high priest, signifies a change in the law, something that the original Jewish audience would have found surprising and controversial. Note how skillfully the writer wove in that controversial topic, which he brings to a conclusion in today's chapter. Hebrews chapter 8 The whole point of what we are saying is that we have such a high priest who sits at the right of the throne of the divine majesty in heaven. He serves as high priest in the most holy place, that is, in the real tent which was put up by the Lord, not by human hands. Every high priest is appointed to present offerings and animal sacrifices to God, and so our high priest must also have something to offer. If he were on earth, he would not be a priest at all since there are priests who offer the gifts required by the Jewish law. The work they do as priests is really only a copy and a shadow of what is in heaven. It is the same as it was with Moses. When he was about to build the sacred tent, God told him, Be sure to make everything according to the pattern you were shown on the mountain. But now Jesus has been given priestly work which is superior to theirs, just as the covenant which he arranged between God and his people is a better one, because it is based on promises of better things. If there had been nothing wrong with the first covenant, there would have been no need for a second one. But God finds fault with his people when he says, The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will draw up a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. 
It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors on the day I took them by the hand and led them out of Egypt. They were not faithful to the covenant I made with them, and so I paid no attention to them. Now this is the covenant that I will make with the people of Israel in the days to come, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their minds and write them on their hearts. I will be their God, and they will be my people. None of them will have to teach their friends or tell their neighbors, Know the Lord, for they will all know me from the least to the greatest. I will forgive their sins, and I will no longer remember their wrongs. By speaking of a new covenant, God has made the first one old, and anything that becomes old and worn out will soon disappear. Let me start us in prayer today. O Lord our God, we sing exactly as you said we would. We sing of your gracious kindness to us, saying, You, O Lord, are our Savior. You were right to be angry with us, but now you comfort us and are no longer angry. Praise you, Father, for sending Jesus to accomplish this, and for his ministry now to us as our high priest. Lord Jesus, thank you for your ministry of praying to the Father for us today. So we trust God today and will not be afraid. You, Lord, give us power and strength. Like thirsty people, we drink in the joy of our being accepted as your people. We rejoice that you have saved us. Let us spread your word to all the nations. Let everyone stand up and shout and sing, because you, God, have published that new covenant you promised. It is not like the old one. With this one, you live among and even inside your people. Your Spirit writes on our hearts about the things we are responsible to do and the ways we can glorify you. Live in us today, Lord. 